This is my overall critique on the 2023 VMAs. Thank you to everyone who commented on my previous video and let me know in my community tab that they wanted to see this video. Um, for me, that your, your feedback definitely helps shape what I make videos about. So always feel free to leave video suggestions in the comments or wherever. So let's get right into this some commentary will come from me wearing my barb hat and some will come from being an unbiased regular viewer so please sit back and relax and enjoy this convo some talking points will be nikki's hosting performances in general but specifically cardi and meg's performance doja cat's performance and a little bit of shakira and then award politics okay so let's start off with the pre-show actually what was the point of the pre-show hosted by sweetie and that other dude um we all know that people were already dragging sweetie for not being able to read the teleprompter fast fast enough so i'm not you know gonna try to do too much on her right now but it seemed like she was definitely underprepared and needed more practice i'm not gonna say that she was high because you know i don't really think so um she could have been but i do think that she was just nervous or just you know I don't know. I can't make any, I can't make up any excuses for her, but nonetheless, I feel like we didn't even really get to see a lot of the pink carpet fashion. Um, and they, a lot of things just felt uh, incomplete, right? So they started to uh, tell us like, oh, these are the nominees for best hip hop. And then they didn't actually say who won. And it would make sense to leave that category for the actual show, but to tell us and not to conclude that with who won was just very incomplete. And I felt like that a lot of the time. I think the point of the pre-show was really just to bring traffic to MTV's YouTube channel since that's where it was hosted. They wanted to bring traffic before the show, during the actual award ceremony, which is why they had that POV backstage and where you can see the crowd um, engagement. And then they also wanted you to come back to the channel post-show in order to watch any performances that you may have missed or wanted to see again. So that felt like a big push for MTV. And it makes sense because that's where a lot of the consumers are these days okay now for Nikki's hosting segment when Nicki Minaj revealed to, revealed to the public that she was hosting the VMAs a lot of people especially the barbs were excited um so this is gonna this segment right here is gonna come from my barb hat so of course I was excited to see my favorite artist on stage and knowing that she was gonna have a lot of screen time because why else would I be interested in watching the VMAs other than her winning or hosting now sometimes I feel like Nikki hyped things up more than she should because like it just gets my opinions and excitements I mean not opinions my expectations and excitement so high and then when it actually happens it's like it wasn't really all that which is exactly how I felt about this year's show so that um, Nikki opened the show and said they got a couple calls and saying, you know, uh, what if Nikki says this and what if she says that? And she said, I can control myself. She said, I can't control Chun-Li or Roman or Red Ruby. Anyway, so it seems like some people were, I don't know, apprehensive about what Nikki would say. But that just doesn't make sense to me because it's like when MTV asked Nikki to host, they knew what they were signing up for. And also, this is not her first time hosting. She co-hosted last year ex after accepting her Video Vanguard Award along with LL Cool J. So they had an idea of who Nikki was as a host. And I just wonder, you know, after her revealing that people made calls, I just wonder what was Nikki's role in the show as an actual hostess? Like, was it meant to be minimal? or was she meant to be interwoven in the show several times like how a main host is we only saw her act as a host in the beginning and maybe in the middle when she presented an award to taylor swift and then she closed out the show um so we do know that usually award shows have presenters that come in so that the host doesn't have to do too much but i really did think that we were going to see more of nikki so i definitely felt slighted in that way which caused me to ask on my community tab do we feel like the vmas use nikki and the barbs for viewership and honestly, there is so much going on anytime Nikki is doing anything, especially a live television event. And so we're just expecting to see a lot of Nikki. And usually last year, she was tweeting amidst the show, like while it was going on saying, hey, I'm about to come back out. She didn't do that this year, which is really neither here or there. She had, you know, way more things to do. But I was just gener generally annoyed by the fact that we didn't see a lot of Nikki. However, taking the writer's strike into consideration, I do feel like her role in the show was always meant to be minimal because 
you know, not only did she have to host, but she had two performances with Last Time I Saw You, her new song, Big Difference, as well as the 50th anniversary of hip hop. And so, you know, she would, that would have been a lot for her to do to continuously go back and forth and give different looks and all that stuff. So I guess, you know, I can be less mad about that. I was happy that we didn't have a lot of awkward moments in the show. A lot of times at award shows, you see a pair of people come out in two. For example, let's just say Nikki and Sweetie came out and they would uh, present an award and then they would have this little sort of like dialogue or banter before they get to the nominees. And that is a part of the award shows that I hate because it's usually just so awkward and I'm an awkward person. So I can immediately tell when something is awkward. And you can tell that it's so scripted, but we didn't have that or much of that in this show because a lot of people came out like by themselves. I remember Shensia came out just by herself to uh, present an award and directly read off the read off of the teleprompter. But if you're still here, thank you so much for listening. Please make sure to like the video if you're still here and turn on notifications so you don't miss out anytime I upload. But let's get to the award show politics and why is Taylor Swift uh, winning everything? I'm not even really about to get into that so deeply because, you know, it's just a lot to unpack. But, you know, once again, putting on my barb hat a little bit, but also speaking as a general consumer, Nikki was nominated in four categories of at the VMA. She was nominated for Artist of the Year, um, Video of the Year for Super Freaky Girl, Best Hip Hop for Super Freaky Girl, as well as Best R&B for her collaboration with Young Blue called Love in the Way. I was actually very surprised for that nomination. She only won Best Hip Hop for Super Freaky Girl, which was a given because she has won that award about seven years straight. And the Barb's actually won that award as the fan voted category. But we also won the category for video of the year as well. And from the jump, you know, we were in the lead by over a million votes. And so they ended up giving the award to Scissor for her song shirt. And it was very disappointing because what is the point of voting for awards and winning when your artist is not winning the awards. MTV is not the only award show that does it. Almost every award show who includes fan voted categories does it. And it's really annoying because it's like they're basically wanting to get a whole bunch of traffic to their website because it's still this industry politics that is guiding who is winning these awards. And so that's why this is one of the reasons why fans and I'm skipping over all my notes here, but it's one of the reasons why fans have less trust in award ceremonies these days, because what they want is not what um, we are being given. Now, as I was getting ready to record this video, SZA's team has come out and said that they pulled out of performing at the VMAs because SZA wasn't nominated or she didn't win um, Artist of the Year and other people like Nicki Minaj who did not release an album was nominated in that category. I caught that shade, but that's neither here or there. Now, let me go back to Best R&B for a moment. SZA won um, for, for shirts, right? And, and Nicki actually won the category in voting-wise for Love in the Way. Now, yes, I was disappointed because we actually won in the category, but I wasn't totally disappointed because SZA did have a big year. Her album, SOS, is doing a lot, has been very impactful. So congratulations to her. Um, however, her team is, you know, disappointed that she was not or she did not win Artist of the Year and other artists like Nicki who had no album out were nominated. Now, Taylor Swift ended up winning that award and it was also a fan voted category and her fans did that because her fans, Taylor Swift was in the leading place and then it was Nicki Minaj at number two. And so, but I think whether like a Taylor actually won it or not by the fans, they would have still given her that award, no shade. And so, you know, with SZA's team, it's like, can you really be mad? Because it's like Taylor Swift is really winning over everybody, even though other artists are technically winning in that category. So yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you guys feel like it was justified for her to pull out, because if that was the case, Nikki could pull out at any and every award show because Nikki really don't be getting the respect that she deserves. She should be getting Artist of the Year. And yes, she should, even though she don't have an album out because 2022 and 2023 combined, Nicki Minaj put out more songs than people with albums. She has performed more. She has been to more award shows. She's been engaging on social media with her fans and doing interviews. So many things that she should have been awarded for last year. She definitely should have won Artist of the Year last year for at any award show it would just be nice to have her win in that category at any award show um and then it would have been nice to see her do that this year now i'll give them a break because she will release the album so she 
should be eligible if that is the eligibility requirements she should be eligible for artist of the year in 2024 let's see but hey you know shout out to SZA if there's any SZA fans let me know and so, yeah, the award show politics is something that the fans will never be with because there's no point in watching if my artist is not really getting rewarded. Now, moving on to the performances, um, the, if you look at MTV's YouTube channel, they have 26 performances, but I'm only going to touch on a couple of them here briefly. Now, taking off my barb hat, um, let's talk about Cardi B and Megan's performance. It was lackluster, but it had extravagant set design and production. The choreography and the vibe of the performance, it felt chaotic. It was a lot going on and it was all over the place. And I had to go back and watch it because when I'm watching things live and it's a lot going on and we're expecting to see a lot of Nikki, my, my head just be all over the place. So after going back and watching it with more of a clearer mind, I still felt like it was all over the place. But most importantly, I noticed that the backtrack was so loud, especially for Cardi's microphone. And I think a, a lot of people have said, so we can all agree that her dance was subpar and her choreography was not on point she with um the other dancers in contrast to Megan Thee Stallion who was on point with her choreography and she just feel looks and feels more comfortable dancing and rapping on stage simultaneously so she was definitely more in sync um, and it looks like it comes off more natural to her than Cardi. Cardi looked like she was in a hurry to get to the next move so that she wouldn't me mess up. But the secret is that when you're performing and when you're on stage is to try to calm yourself down and be present in the moment because that's how you don't mess up. So let me know if, in the comments if you feel like... Um, the performance of bongos did anything for the performance of the song on streaming or increase you know from that publicity of the performance now moving on nikki's performances were great but um if you did not see my videos on that definitely click the links below for my other videos i did a whole reaction video an in-depth one on my honest critiques of nikki's performance and i'll leave that below for you in the comments so definitely go watch it now, moving on to Doja's performance, it wasn't as bad as I thought it was. I thought it was terrible while I was watching it live, so I went back to watch it on YouTube, and I must say, it was okay. She didn't do a lot of dancing, and that's fine. I don't require that from rappers at all, but the one thing that really distracted me from her performance was what she was wearing. I didn't understand why she looked like a secretary wearing, um, like, office clothes like a regular conventional nine to five job that really threw me off especially with the pairing of her backup dancers in the red and blood body paint thing where you see her um in the music video for attention I just didn't understand that and it had me distracted but what I do respect about Doja Cat's performance is that there was no backtrack the only backtrack you heard from um, was when she was singing on the hook of attention. Doja is a real performer. I definitely don't think that this performance was her best. We also saw her Coachella performance back in 2021 or 2022, and that was amazing. It was superb. I've never seen Doja live in person, but when I saw that Coachella performance, she was definitely something that I would pay for it and not that I would actually do it. But yeah, this performance was what it was. It wasn't bad and it wasn't all that great. It was just mid, which is how we describe everything that she's been doing these days, or let me speak for myself. But one thing about Doja is that she's obviously comfortable on, um, on stage and she is comfortable performing. And that's really all you can ask from an artist these days because a lot of artists don't take the art of performing seriously now um one of the reasons that award shows are too long i wanted to touch on the flow of the show one of the reasons that award shows are too long even though they didn't have writers for the monologues they had so many performances i think was a result of the strike it could have been or should have been a two and a half to three hour long show, especially when you don't have the main host interwoven into the show as we probably expected them to. However, some performances felt out of place like they didn't need to be there. Like, I'm not sure why Demi Lovato was asked to perform. I think she just dropped some songs this year. Um, She opened up with Heart Attack, which is one of my favorite pop songs of all time. My favorite song by her. And um, so that really caught people's attention. But after that, I was out um so she's now i think released a rock version of her most popular songs or something like that 
But yeah, I felt her her performance was unnecessary. But um, I saw a tweet where it said like the VMAs use three demographics, like the Barb's and the Swifties as K-pop fans um, for this year's viewership. And it really made me think. And that's why I was like, hmm, maybe I should really do this video because I want to see what other people have to say. Shakira's performance now. Okay. Let's get into some things. Shakira's performance felt like it would never end. And I'm definitely biased here, not in a barb way, but just in a pop culture, you know, t type way. Because um, this goes back to our award show politics section, because I truly believe that Katy Perry and Lady Gaga deserve the Video Vanguard Award before Shakira. And it's really no shade to Shakira. She is a legend and has had an amazing impact on the industry, especially for Latinx artists and women. But I just really feel like we have um, we should have give, given the award to Katy Perry. And so keeping that in mind, I feel like MTV is playing a lot of politics right now. We have the music industry politics and then we have these diversity and inclusion politics. So last year they awarded the Video Vanguard Award to Nicki Minaj, who is a black woman. This year they awarded Shakira, a Latina woman. And it feels like they're trying to do this surface level diversity and inclusion thing where they just kind of give minorities awards. Now Shakira and Nicki both deserved their awards and Nicki definitely deserved it at the time that she got it. But I I don't know if Shakira deserved that award before Katy Perry and before Lady Gaga. They need to go back and give Katy what she deserves, what she's due, and Gaga her own in the next year, okay? Now, if you know me personally, you know that I was a bigger fan of Gaga than Katy, so you know I'm really unbiased here because I could have said, nah, just give it to Gaga, but no, Katy Perry had such a strong impact on all of our lives M way back in middle school elementary school and high school you know if you were a part of my generation um when we were tweens and young teenagers before even gaga you know before gaga even came on the scene but anyway you know congrats to shakira and it was cool to see her win best collab with carol g as well so um i think yeah, there were just way too many performances. I think award shows should have no more than 10 performances because even though it was less talking, it was just more a lot of detail to pay attention to. And the viewer will get exhausted by that. So, um, yeah, I feel like in conclusion, the award shows need to like chill with all these politics to help instill trust in the fans, which will then uh, increase their viewership and I didn't even really get into the numbers in this video but I forgot about that but I know we talked a lot about the VMAs this week so tell me if you agree um to tell me what you agree with and what you disagree with and with, with what I had to say and please like the video and um yeah tell me your um opinion so that hopefully if anybody works for the vmas they see this and they improve next year okay so um check out make sure to check out my other videos on the vmas if you haven't already i did a best and worst dress on the pink carpet and then um a general reaction to nikki's presence and um and performance on the vmas as well as her fashion and um once again another in-depth critique of her performance all of that is on my channel right here on destiny reloaded so thank you guys so much for watching once again and please like the video